Hello Targar our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it is time for another Orc Mode Workout. And today was Dynamic Effort Squat and Deadlift Day, but a quick reminder if you guys could click like down below, help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes, it would be greatly appreciated. And as promised, we're going back to the slightly more traditional weights because I made pretty amazing progress doing those. I mean, this is what got me originally to the 500 box squat. Um, and it's contributed the most to me getting to that 550 box squat. All right, so we need to go back to doing this um, with this type of speed work. And because, again, it was very successful for me. But it's also the issue of body composition. So basically, the training I had been doing last year, earlier this year, um, in between some, some different bases, seemed to have produced the best results. The only difference is that I need to continue to add more and more hypertrophy work and keep my sled drags and everything up. So we're going to go back to doing what we know has worked for me. And by the way, I largely program my clients that way. Other stuff I experiment with, I don't, I don't necessarily throw it at my lifters. I uh, experiment with myself. And as I said before, I'm just not elite enough to benefit from the, the most aggressive west side speed waves. I'm just not. Stuff works great. So what are we at? For the speed squats, we did 50% max. Since my box squat max is 552, I, I just do two. Basically, it's 282 on the bar. It looks like 275 in place, but that's a heavier bar. Uh, and then I did the appropriate chain weight. Now, some people say, like, well, a little bit of chains on the ground. Well, that's okay. I always go a couple pounds over on the chain weight to make up for it, and I'm a couple pounds over on the bar. So we're fine. Uh, speed started a little slow, but as I got into it, it got better and better and better. I was really happy with the speed near the end. But we did 10 doubles, and I'll probably do 9 doubles and 8 doubles or something like that going into the heavier waves. Again, slightly reducing the volume to compensate for the weight increase so that we can maintain that speed and everything that we want through the wave. And the deadlifts were very, very fast. Like, the explosiveness is there on deadlifts. And I think I'm at the point where uh, a lot of my hypertrophy work will be geared towards deadlifts. I don't feel like I need to focus as much on, on the deadlifting for maxes. I really need to get my squatting a little better. So I think what I'm probably going to do as far as rotating max work, I'm probably going to go squat, good morning, squat, deadlift. So four week rotation. So it'll be it'll be pretty similar because I don't feel that I have to deadlift that heavy. Right? I've been hitting PRs only deadlifting once every three weeks. I can deadlift once every four and as long as I build the hypertrophy muscles up and I do those speed pulls, uh, my deadlift will come along perfect. Like I get all the technical work I could possibly need off the speed, the speed pulls. In fact, I was really happy with how they look today. So I think that's the direction I'm going to go. So we're going to rotate a little more accommodation on box squats. Although I'm thinking I want to try maybe a max lift this coming week. Right? I want to try maybe the max with the Cambridge bar again because it's been a little while. I want to try it with just straight weight because I know for a fact I'll PR it because I've only done it with straight weight once and it was the first day I had it and it was like 5.05 and then I stopped. Like there, there's no way I'm not going to just destroy that. Not even imaginable that I'm not going to just crush that. So uh, that's, that's what we're going to do. And you guys will notice I finally got the rack because definitely bolted down in the corners. I went ahead and got a drill and bits that were strong enough to get through there. So I bolted it down, and I, I may coming up here in the future, the inventory is an issue with Rogue. I eventually want to go ahead and turn it into a full rack. I don't need to buy a full rack. They have conversion kits for 350 bucks to convert this into a full rack. And I want to get one of those monoliths, but they're, they're out of stock. Like, I can't get one right now. So I want to get one of their little monoliths, and I feel like that would really make all this speed work even more efficient. All right? It'll make everything more efficient. Um, but, you know... I've got to wait on inventory and other stuff and, you know, whatever, work it around, whatever I'm doing in my life, of getting it delivered correctly and, and putting it all together. Uh, but as you guys notice, definitely sweating here. And it's, this is one reason I train shirtless. People are like, they'll, they'll make a big deal about this. It's like, guys, it saves me so much laundry. It's not hot in my place. All right. This is how much I sweat during this training. It's the humidity for one and the fact that I'm like a space heater. Like every everyone who, who knows me, every, well, just figure out what sort of people. I'm like a space heater. I'm super hot. I have to keep fans on me at night, like blowing on me even when it's cold, just so that I don't sweat all over bed. So I'm very, very hot natured. 
It's one reason I can just hammer the carbs I'm hammering down and I keep losing weight. Um, and so the thing I run into here, I have a fan blowing on me. There's a box fan in here directly blowing at the squat rack. And the air conditioning is on. The AC is set to 70, the thermostat is set to 70, and I have a fan blowing on me. And that's 70 Fahrenheit. So again, uh, it's just, it's easier for me in general. Plus there's no way to hide anything. Everyone sees more or less what I look like. Changes in muscle, changes in body fat. It, it's all out there in the open. It's about as transparent as it gets. So that's kind of the way I run my channel these days. Whatever people think about, oh, you've deceived us on this or that or anything in the past. Everything is transparent these days, all right? Everything is transparent for the most part other than my coaching business, and that's fine. The funny part is that other people get to see it. Um, a lot of other coaches and lifters and everything in the community are on my friends list, and they get to see it. So plenty of them can vouch for the fact that, yeah, he, he probably has more than a dozen clients based on what we see. You know, is what it is. So everything else is transparent. You guys see calibrated plates. I've weighed in recently on camera. So we know that I'm 219, not 250, not 300. Because I've actually, the funny part is I actually have had a band of troll the other day it's coming in saying oh you know you're doing all these these variations and really your your strength numbers are entry level for your body weight and it's like really because my deadlift is, is considered to be elite for my body weight in age class so i i don't know where you're getting that but i think it's because uh, people assume i weigh more than i do because there's always been that until i did dexa scans and weighed in i had people who thought i was 300 pounds you know, there were people recently, um, again, I guess saying I'm 250. No, 219, and I'm going to keep trimming down. I have body fat that I can lose without losing performance, I think, at this point. All right? And I think I don't think anyone will disagree with that. Even, even my worst detractor will agree that I can lose more body fat without losing any muscle or performance. I have enough body fat that I could do that. Okay? So I'll keep trimming down slowly, but it's going to be very, very slow. People were literally like, really, that last four pound weight drop was like 10 weeks. Yep. Yep. And I have no issue with that. Because I've set PRs while doing it. Well, what if we can do that again? What if I can drop another four pounds and set PRs? Then drop another four pounds while setting PRs. Well, that's, that's perfect. That's ideal. That's what we want. But back over to these speed pulls. Notice how fast the speed pulls are. And they got faster as I got used to doing it with the chains. Uh, and I'm really hitting those lockouts hard. Which I struggled with the bands. And I think it's because I miscalculated the very peak tension of my bands. So this isn't bad. So this is the same thing. It's 50% plus 25%. So basically I round some of it up. It's like 315 on the bar and 150 something pounds of chains. Like 155, 156. I've got it set to where there should be just a tiny amount still on the ground because we don't want the chains to swing. But these were, were explosive and obviously we'll progress the wave. But very happy with it. Good grip training. Uh, so again, the speed work went good. And I feel like this alone, this is all the training I really need for my deadlift as long as I keep hypertrophying all the muscles. And what, what do we mean? Good mornings, reverse hypers, glute ham raises, rows. I still will build my deadlift. And any other muscles that contribute are being trained with all my squat training in general. But the good mornings alone, I feel like the good mornings do a lot for my deadlifts. So good mornings and speed pulls, they're pretty much staples for me for my deadlift training right now. And this will what'll take it up to the next level. But it's the grip work. I gotta have grip training. And so a lot of what I'm doing is geared towards making sure my grip gets work all the time. We gotta keep hammering that grip this helps though i mean chain chains and bands for speed work definitely helps with grip especially when you hit those lockouts hard and you're pulling hard against it um i almost felt like i couldn't do good mornings after that though once i warmed up but i'm like let me try to do just one quality set with what i've been doing it's, it's harder when i do a max it's easier to do good mornings i got like the three sets after my max but after all that speed work it's a lot of work so I managed to grind out 20 reps with the 265 for one. And I felt my whole like lower back, maybe upper glute area cramping a little bit. 
my left side down there through that whole region it was kind of like man that we can't handle this this is all we can take so like my left glute and left set of erectors were, were cramping a little bit after this but factoring in that i just did all of that work with the speed work 10 sets of each fast explosive happy with it to even do 20 reps with a, with a heavy weight like this for one set i'm good because i'm going to do other work after this it's just that those muscles are fatigued and yes the good morning just staples so i wanted to at least do some but i mean when we start factoring in workload and tonnage 20 reps with, with 265 that's more work than doing two sets of 10 with 225 that's for sure back is probably more workload and density than three sets of 10 with 225 but because this is pretty much a limit set, I had to rest pause the last rep or two. Uh, I got a training effect, especially off the back end of the other stuff. And then, of course, I do other posterior chain work and upper back work. Uh, group was a little bit more fatigued. So most of these, I think at least four of these sets of inverted rows, I had to regrip, especially because of the axle bar. I had to regrip them near the end uh, because my grip was just kind of giving out. But five sets of 15 on these which are pretty much limit sets my grip is usually giving at that point but i still get really good lat and upper back activation from it so i'm happy with it and especially with the higher reps and i'm not worried about increasing tension by getting my feet up right now maybe when the 15s get easy we'll we'll go back to foot elevated uh, but i want the higher reps right now i want the volume why because we're focusing on body composition I want my speed work to be speed and technical. I want my max work to be really heavy and max out. And I want to use all my rep work now to focus entirely on body composition. Hypertrophy, hypertrophy, hypertrophy. That's the name of the game. At any cost. And so it'll be a lot of volume. It'll be a lot of reps. I probably won't do anything less than 10 reps. And I'll be doing 15s and 20s and things. Okay? Workload, workload. And I'm not worried about the negatives of doing that of, oh, we might lose intramuscular coordination or we're not getting enough tension. Well, because I max out on an upper and a lower lift every week, we're getting that. Okay. The speed work, the same thing. I get all my compensatory acceleration I could possibly need. Doing speed work with bands and chains and doing it explosively with the correct ways, we're good. I can just focus on really... Uh, almost training the way bodybuilders train for this other stuff. It's just that it's geared around the muscles that I need to get stronger, to bring up my weak links. But really, I'm growing everything because I'm even doing curls. We're doing side delts. We're doing everything. Okay. Only thing I've, I'm probably neglecting with it is quads to some to a lesser extent. But I sled drag. I drag a sled. That grows my quads. But again, the grip training, the axle bar with this is, is, is better grip work because my grip actually starts giving out. It's grip work. Then we did the three sets of 20 on the glute ham raises. My thigh was feeling better. That minor pull is gone. I'm able to do these. This movement I feel is going to be critical for my squatting. As far as bringing up my weak links in my lower body, I really feel those areas on this. All my hips particularly. Yes, I feel it in my hamstrings the most, obviously, because it's a hamstring dominant movement. But this, this movement works a lot of hip for me. Right? And so do my hanging leg raises. So if, if I had to pick two lifts right now outside of my speed squats and my sled drags that are going to give me the most to my squatting, I feel like this and my hanging leg raises. Because I feel like hips, I just need more hip strength. I need other stuff. I need quad. I need hamstring. We need glute. We, you know, we need upper back. But as far as, as what I feel like the weaknesses are, besides upper back, it tends to be some hip. Now, obviously, we want everything to grow, but I really, really feel like this is what's going to give me the most carryover. And, man, these were tough with 20 today. They were tough. That first set wasn't bad. Like, I did the first set, and I'm like, I could have done another rep or two. This second set rep 20 that's all i had like it, it was pretty much a limit set i didn't have another rep like the last one was a little grindy okay the third set i had to rest pause like i got to 15 and had to start taking a couple seconds at the top to do the last there and I, I if i wouldn't have done the rest pause i would not have made it to 20. so i did that in order to take it all the way out 
And so with only three sets, this was a ton of work in, in terms of just generating fatigue, especially when you're grinding your last one so you have no reps in reserve or your second set. Get to that third set and I'm having to rest pause to get the last five reps. Okay, which tells me I was within a rep or two of failure by 15, maybe within two reps. But by taking those breaks, I was able to get the target reps that I might not have been able to get. And, and again, I'm on a harder setting on this and be weighing in again 219, all that upper body swing. Right, it's a lot because this removes my ability to have my, you know, the fact that I, I have shorter femurs so I can get away with certain things for leverages. But I've got a fairly long torso. So, again, this gets used against me here. So these are tough. These are tough, especially when I run it on a harder setting. But yeah. So that's a 20. They were they felt good though. Felt my hamstrings light up and they light up differently than the other movements because of the, the knee flexion involved. Uh, felt my hips. Felt a ton of hip extension. You know, to the point where they're throbbing. Um, and, and I need that. I need those hips to get stronger for those wide stance squats. I feel like that in the upper back is going to make or break me. But the upper back is getting trained every day. I'm doing upper back work every day. We're addressing it all the time. Right? Because we know that that just needs to come up in general. All three of my big lifts could potentially benefit from that. I feel like squats will get the most out of it. But bench and deadlift need it too. So that's being addressed continually. Uh, this is one of the premier movements that's going to really bring that squat up to the next level. Uh, as the upper back gets strong enough and thick enough to really handle it and maintain uh, the correct positions. All right, because I need the, those hips. I need those hips, especially to control that negative at the very bottom when it gets heavy. Uh, the, I need the hip extension to get through my sticking point. Because for me, the sticking point on the squat, it, it really is hips kind of giving out. Now, sometimes that's me being pulled a little bit too far forward with the upper back contributing. But it's still the, the sum total of all of it. But the hips are still going to be the limiting factor too. As far as the ability to move it. The upper back to keep in the correct positions. So then we did shrugs. Um, so why shrugs? I don't want to do too many of these. And I keep them fairly light. Because I don't want to put axial loading on myself. I need more trap and upper back. And I need more grip. We know right now my grip is my limiting factor on the deadlift. So we do 20 sets of those axle bar rows every week. But I wanted to do some shrugs also. And today was a lot of grip work. It was a ton of grip work. Because speed pulls against bands. Five sets of the rows with the axle bar. And then just banging out shrugs with no straps for high reps. Okay, even with 225. Again, it's a grip challenge. And right about 15 is pretty much my limit. So I try to pause and squeeze on the last rep. And we could argue that, well, you could, I could probably get more with straps up for my traps. And my traps are getting worked all the time. Okay, we're doing a ton of trap work. Keeping in mind my upper body days, upper body days we're doing two sets of, of up, five sets of upright rows on top of it. So we're doing 20 sets of the inverted rows with the axle bar. 10 sets of upright rows every week. That's a lot of trap work. And that's not counting any pulls. So this just finishes it off, right? While really giving me an extra grip exercise. And I'll probably cut these out soon. Like I just want to make sure I get the little bit of extra grip training, a little bit of extra trap work. I could always throw in forms of upright rows and stuff into this, this lower body day. And mainly it makes my four main days a little more upper body dominant doing all that. But that's okay because my restoration days are more lower body dominant. I've stopped doing work on my restoration days for my upper body for the most part you know, abs and everything, and maybe some grip work. But I'd rather get all the upper body stuff done these four days so that the lower body uh, ends up getting more of the restoration and the sled drags and everything. So, again, if we look at my four workouts, they do seem a little bit upper body dominant in terms of my hypertrophy work and, and my supplemental lifts. Mainly because on the, upper the lower body days, I'm doing rows and shrugs, right? But they're good deadlift and squat accessories. So, so they're okay, they're acceptable, but it is a little bit upper body dominant. But most people, when we look at it, we know my bench isn't caught up to my squat and deadlift. Right? It's not. Like, for mine to be equal, for me to have a bench that's equal to my squat and deadlift in terms of actual strength standards, I've got to be benching like 400. I'm not. My best bench this year has been 352. Okay? 
So my upper body is technically slightly behind my lower body. So that's okay if we give it a little more work, particularly in areas that are still going to help the lower body lifts. It's all good. I'm happy with it. So again, the shrugs, five sets of 15, um, and pretty much getting near the limits of my grip on each one. And I pick a weight that I, I know that I can get about that with. Um, and then we did the five by 10 with 315 on my reverse hypers. And again, you guys know why I do this lift. It's understood. And these are my premier lifts. I mean, I mean, realistically, because of the equipment I have available, I don't have to have as much variation and come up with creative lower body lifts. I've got a glute ham device and a reverse hyper. And I've got access to different bars to do different types of good mornings. I mean, I'm pretty well set. Only people, things where people say, well, maybe your quad stuff, but I have sl sled drag. And speed squats contribute to all that. So as far as supplemental lifts go, like I have so much available to me that I just don't have to be creative. We don't have to be as creative. And so I do these all the time. So for those unaware, I, I do around 150 reps of these on my three restoration days also with lighter weight. So we're, we're concerned with really trying to get the heaviest weight we can do strictly for sets of 10 uh, on these days. And right now it's about 315. This is still, this is a challenge. The first couple sets aren't bad. By that fourth or fifth set, uh, it gets really, really hard on the last rep, particularly if I've done other hamstring work and stuff in the day, and I almost always have, so I'm not fresh. So again, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and I feel it in my hamstring sometimes after, but mainly I feel my low back. So if, if people are wondering what makes it a limit set, what seems to be the limiting muscle for me, oh, my, my lower back. Usually near the end with this weight, the last rep or two, my lower back is just feels like it's at its limit. That's all I can push. The beauty of it is, is that this is not an exercise and I'm worried about hurting my low back. It's therapeutic. So that's also the, the, the perk of it, you know. And again, I'm keeping these stricter. I don't do as much range of motion and I don't do as much swing. Because if I let it swing forward, you guys know I've done it. I've, you guys have seen me do over 400 pounds or sets of 25 when I just swing. Right? But we're not doing that. We're trying to actually use the spinal erectors, the glutes, and the hamstrings to lift a weight and control it. And so now I don't let it swing forward. Um, and so it, it's more challenging. And it gives me a truer test of where my strength is with it and better way to judge progression. So overall, good workout. Really happy with it. Let's see if we can get a squat PR of some type this coming week. So I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.